Mr. DeLeo? Here. Mr. DePorter is absent. Mr. Schmidt? Here. Mrs. Wade? Yes, here. Mr. Youngblood? Here. Notice was provided to the Burns Home News, Curry News, Star Ledger, to comply with the municipal court and post on the municipal bulletin board on December 12, 2014. Please rise for the pleasure of meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. on the agenda, I'll um, move to approval of minutes for June 22, 2015, Mr. Smith is absent. Um, any alterations or changes to the minutes? Seeing that I'm not seeing a motion. I'll move. Move by Mr. Youngblood. Second. Second by Mr. DeLeo. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain. At this point in the meeting, the Mayor and Council Welcome comments from any member of the public to help facilitate an orderly meeting and to permit the opportunity for anyone who wishes to be heard. Speakers shall limit their comments to five minutes. If reading from a prepared statement, please make a copy and email a copy to the clerk's office after making your comments so it may be properly reflect reflected in the minutes. Uh, anyone from the public wishing to be heard? Good evening, Mayor Council. Rob Walton, Jersey Central Power and Light. Swing I'm sorry, up. I didn't catch I'm sorry. you. Rob Walton, Jersey Central Power and Light. Thank you. Uh, several weeks ago, there was a very extended outage impacting Burnsville and Burns Township, uh, right because of um, some primary wires on the railroad tracks that came down to do a tree falling on them. Um, primary wires are, again, there are three kinds of wires. You've got your transmission lines, which are the big wires and the big poles. Your primary wires, which are three-phase electric, going on the very top of our poles. And then about uh, a foot down from that are uh, secondary distribution which is what goes into your homes. So this took down our primary wires on the railroad tracks. And that is a difficult outage for us because of access issues back there. So we know if you're a town engineer to look at uh, different ways to get access back there, um, it's probably going to require some extensive DEP permitting. So that doesn't look like a very uh, reasonable option, at least in the, in the near future. But we are going to be putting in a new pole and a new switch um, as part of the railroad shutdown um, in the next several weeks. And that will help us restore power faster to the residents of Burnsville should we have an outage out there again. So hopefully that will uh, you know, greatly improve uh, reliability for your folks. Another thing I want to update you on is uh, every year we are required by the BPU to do a storm drill to replicate what uh, would happen during a Sandy type of incident. We replicated Sandy day three uh, a couple weeks ago, tested some of our new procedures and processes. A lot of things worked a lot better than they did during Sandy and uh, still some things to work through, but uh, hopefully we're best get repaired so things like that happen again. That's all I've got for tonight. You can listen to me asking questions. I want to thank you very much. We you get your emails constantly whenever there's a yeah, power down in the great. area, and you're, you're very responsible. And thank you for your dedication and hard work. Glad to help. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else from the public wishing to be heard? Seeing that I'll close the open session, move on to ordinances. I'll open a public hearing at ordinance 15. They have 1694, an ordinance adopting additional revision to the State Housing Code as recommended by the Housing Advisory Committee and supplementing and amending Chapter 11 of the Borough Code entitled Property Maintenance. Anybody from the public wish to be heard on this matter? Council members? Seeing that I'll close the public hearing, I'll accept the motion to pass on final reading and this document is published. Moved by Mr. Schmidt. Second. Second. Second by Mr. DeLeo. Roll call, please. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Youngblood? Yes. Mr. DeLeo? Yes. Mrs. Wade? Yes. I'd open a public hearing, hearing at ordinance 15-1695, an ordinance establishing a zoning permit requirement and supplementing and amending the borough land use ordinance. I'll open a public hearing on this on this ordinance, any members from the public wishing to be heard? Council members? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and accept the motion to pass on final reading as adopted as published. I have a motion? Um, Moved by Mr. Youngblood. Second. Second by Councilwoman Wade. Roll call, please. Mrs. Wade? Yes. Mr. DeLeo? Yes. Mr. Youngblood? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes.
I don't entertain a motion to move um, 151696 concerning parking restrictions on Claremont Road and amending Chapter 7 of the Borough Code and Title Traffic. Be introduced by title, passed on first reading, published according to law, and that a public hearing be scheduled for a meeting beginning 7 p.m. on August 10, 2015. I have a motion. Well, can I just ask, I didn't go out and pace off you know, 268 feet from the corner of CE mm -hmm. to 300. What is that? What spot are we talking about and why? Well, we can discuss that with the public hearing, that hearing. Oh, um, okay. Kevin, do you have any input on this? Yeah, it's, it's the driveway entrance for our lady to take to about there. Okay. It's, it, it equates to one parking spot before the entrance to allow more of a room for the cars to move. Pulling in and out. Okay. Yeah, one question. I mean, there are one, two, three, between the corner and, um, let's say, probably like seven driveways. Is it possible to, rather than signage, uh, you know, I, don't, I don't know what's, how, how close to the driveway is someone actually supposed to be allowed to park, and can we put some yellow paint on the... Well, it would be, the signs are required by statute in order to be enforced. Right, and all signs enforcing. It has to be signed <laughs> up to code with the uh, new for a on traffic code devices. The mechanic is going to require signs. I mean, you can't substitute signs with only three markers. Okay? We do intend on also repainting all of the yellow curves in those areas and putting appropriate street markers on the streets as well as the signs okay? to better delineate those spots. But we have to put a sign up. You can't do it without a sign. Okay. And to Janet's question, is that the drive, is that the entrance to the church or the entrance to the right yes, the right? entrance to the back parking lot behind the church, the main parking lot right of the church, the main entrance. And that's 250 feet or whatever you're going to close. We're only going to close, well, that 50 feet includes the driveway. So the sign, the sign's going to be posted at the far end of the driveway. Right. It doesn't really matter. It's a dry time to block the driveway. So we're right. just including that in that 50 feet. Right. We're only taking, I don't mean, have the ordinance in front of me, but it really equates to one parking space right next to the driveway. Okay. Beyond the driveway? No, in front of the driveway. Okay. So the vehicles that are traveling north on the road, when they make the right turn into the church, what they're actually having to do is swing into oncoming traffic and uh, be able to maneuver the turn to make the right turn. So yes. we're, we're offering a little bit of a safety buffer. Um, before you make the turn, Makes sense. So the vehicles don't have to cross the center line. So it doesn't go all the way down to the second drive. No. No, it's only in front of the one drive. And there's, there's another parking space behind it. Right, that's what's in the driveway. We didn't take the whole. We take the whole space. Oh, so you take it first. take it home. And that was at the request of our manager. Yeah, I'll hand I'll well, second. Love, second. Love, second. Love, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? The ayes have it. All right. Entertain a motion to move 15 1697, amended and supplementing Chapter 12 of the Borough Land Development Ordinance titled Zoning by Aiming Provisions Regulating the Parking and Storage of Commercial Vehicles. Be introduced by title, passed on first reading, published according to law that a public hearing be scheduled for a meeting beginning 7 p.m. August 10th. Do have a motion? Oh, yeah. Motion on Councilman Schmidt. Second. Second by Councilman DeLeo. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Kevin, can I, 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 I hate waiting till next two weeks or actually a month from now. On that it referenced the size of the letters, but it referenced the code. Um, it takes me so long to find it on here. The, size of the, letters the minimum size. size of the letters. Yes. Yeah. Why don't we just put the size of the letters in there? So it may be different. All I'm saying is if you have a vehicle that's lettered, as long as it's lettered within the current code, no, yeah. then it's fine to be there. Yeah. I would just think for someone trying to figure out whether they're like their vehicle is legal if it says the letters have to be such and such a size. And it that's by statute also. Okay. So those are commercial vehicle statutes. Okay. Okay. Um, 
Did I do a motion? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. I can't remember. All right. Um, 15, 16, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 15, 16, 98. Refund, um, refunding bond ordinance authorizing the issuance of $2 million dollars refunding bonds of the borough of Burnsville and County of Somerset, New Jersey. Be introduced by title, passed on first reading, published according to law, and that a public hearing be scheduled for a meeting at 7 p.m. August 10, 2013. Move. Move we'll by um, Council Bear Brown. Second. Well, second. Second by Councilwoman Waite. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. The ayes have it. Right, resolutions. We have 15 141 to 15 153. Any council members have any comments or questions on any of the resolutions? No? Can we take out the uh, <coughs> set aside the ABC? Well, Set aside the Which ABC. Which one? 148. 148. Any others? Nope. Okay, I'll just make a motion to um, move 15141 to 15147, 15149 to 15153. Moved by Councilman Youngblood. Second. Second by Councilman Lee. Roll call, please. Mr. Berenbaum. Yes. Mr. Leo? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mrs. Wade? Yes. And Mr. Youngblood? Yes. All right, Peter, um, 15148, authorized renewal of ABC licenses. Yep. I just want to ask the chief if there are any issues that have come up in the past that we should be, uh, should we should know. What location? The ones, uh... <coughs> no, they were all of them. Yeah. Everything, everything that would have come up would have been in the investigation. Yes, they wouldn't be on a resolution if there were any issues. And that's nine of our 12 licenses. Three of them are still pending. Okay. <coughs> Very good. That's it. That's all I want to know. I just want to make a comment on uh, 15144. 15, uh, that's uh, the contract was awarded for Sycamore Hill Road. That's one of our 2015 projects for road improvements. And uh, it came in under um, the budget amount that we uh, predicted. So that's good news. Okay? So we can get started with that. <coughs> All right, I'll entertain a motion to um, move 15148. I'll move it. Move by Councilman Bearbaum. Second. Yes, I'll second. Second by Councilman Lake. Roll call, please. Um. This one doesn't spend money, so you don't need a roll call. You don't need a roll call? All, right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? No, the ayes have it. All right, report municipal attorney. Any council members have any questions for the attorney report? Seeing none, I'll move the council committee reports. Public safety? Um, there, you know, the, the one thing that I think you guys are all aware of, but they are actually um, on Mount Airy Road. They are now requesting that there are no, they're going to put up signs preventing pedestrians during the day uh, from about 8 to 4. So no more walkers, you know, for everyone's safety. Other than that, I think that's about all that's, Chief, you want to add anything? <laughs> We're interviewing for the uh, position for police officer to start interviews and it will be advancing that process for the council and so we're getting a uh, report on that. Um, the Office of Emergency Management continues to be very active in developing some new programs that are being required by the uh, state and by FEMA so that we're in compliance with all the federal regulations, which continues to mean that we're eligible for FEMA funding uh, when it becomes available. If we're not eligible um, if we're not compliant with the different programs that are being passed out from the, the federal government to the state and county to us, then we wouldn't be able to receive FEMA funding for disasters and mitigation grants and whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, we provided our 2015 progress report on hazard mitigation, um, which I think I provided copies um, to the Public Safety Committee and to the Mayor and the Administrator. Um, so we're up to date on that. And our CERT, continue, our CERT program continues to be active um, with their monthly meetings and helping where they can during uh, public events and activities that are out there. Right. 
Okay, anyone else? Any questions? All right, finance personnel. Um, most are busy with the uh, uh, getting the bond ordinance uh, in line. Uh, Ralph's been doing a lot of time on that, especially <coughs> lining up the uh, rating authorities and making sure all the numbers are ready. And we met with them last week, and everything is looking in uh, tip top shape at this point. Um, we'll probably be shifting into more uh, a lot of personnel issues coming up soon, um, just because of uh, you know. On retirement and uh, trying to uh, start working on some goals and uh, for each of our senior people. Very good. Anyone else? Question? Questions? Seeing none, we'll go to engineering, technology, and public works. Okay, we have a long laundry list, so just bear with me. Uh, we had a meeting on July 7th, last, uh, last week. So here's our update for our uh, month for July. So drainage projects for Lake View, Rolling, and Hearts Gravel uh, have been started. Uh, Hearts Gravel's work is going to be beginning this week. Doug, have they started? Yes. Sure. Okay. Ted, Lake View <laughs> and Rolling test pits, test pits have been completed, and the structures are being fabricated. So Rolling and, and Lake View structures staked out was July 8th. Uh, post kennel drainage is completed. It was completed last year. So paving will be done on that road along with Lakeview and Rolling and Hearts Gravel. The projection right now is around mid-September. Uh, road construction for Mighty Mount Road, Bondurn Park. Uh, the contract was awarded. Um, Pre-construction meetings planned for the 14th. Uh, anticipating note to start is the 20th of July. And that's it for that area. And the next one is Sycamore Road. So we awarded the contract today. We approved it. Yep. So we'll move forward with that road. And the next uh, project is Claremont and Park Lane drainage. So the contract was awarded a couple weeks ago. Uh, the D, uh, New Jersey DEP permits were received. We're waiting on head wall design and cut sheets from the contractor. Projected to start in August. Right, Doug? Okay. Round Top Road, uh, we um, <coughs> decided as a committee to uh, backfill the edges of Round Top Road where we saw some breakage with stone, and that has been completed by uh, a contractor. Um, I haven't gone up there to look. Uh, are you satisfied with the work? Yeah, looks good. Okay, good. Post Conhard Road, the field work has been completed, base map drafting completed, and design work is in progress. Uh, Mika Road, design completed, miscellaneous details like traffic control plans are in progress. Design plans initially approved by the uh, New Jersey DOT Railroad Engineering Service Unit, but they still need to set up a DOT and a transit meeting to discuss that project. Um, Mullins Lane, um, air spading of the, uh, the trees that remain there was done, and we're waiting on um, a final update of the plans from our landscape architect. And also we have to send them down to Shippo for a final look at. And the utility pole, utility pole relocation, uh, we're waiting on the cost for that. Uh, Liberty Road, the section that collapsed uh, due to the storm. Sewer, uh, our uh, sanitary sewer has been paved. The side of the roads were topsoiled and seeded, and that's been completed. And it looks great up there. I think many of the neighbors are happy with the, uh, with the progress that's been done up there. Uh, CD Drive, the pool, the entrance to uh, the uh, middle school and bedwell has been completed. Uh, the sections of it were completed by the town, and the other sections were completed by the Board of Education. And it looks great. And uh, our local guys went back and backfilled some edges of the roads with stone. And one of the um, storm sewers they backfilled with stone. So it looks great. That's all done. Uh, I think the next step is probably striping, right, Doug? Mm -hmm. Contracted out striper. Um, what else do we have here? <coughs> Pothole truck. Pothole truck. So we contracted with, uh, I don't know the name of the vendor, Doug? Pothole killer. Pothole killer. They showed up, they started on Monday. They started last <laughs> Monday. <coughs> uh, how, how far along are they? Uh, we saw a few more rounds to Okay. Them. So. Uh, what else do we have here? Oh, the Borough Hall, and the air conditioner is installed and it's working. And it's it is? It's right in here. And, um, yeah, I can hear. 
Yeah, I shut the door. Oh, that's fine. Uh, oh, yeah. And we had True Green uh, spreading outside of the borough hall. We see a lot of weed spread coming up. And that's really it. Okay, so let's spend busy. And, uh, any questions? Okay. All right. Um, any other committee reports or commission reports? Seeing on others, I'll move the items of business. Transfer agreement, Barney's call. Um, we're going to um, take that until the August meeting. Okay. And we're going to get back to it for a whole of plants and the trees on the train station. You've got the wrong one? The wrong ones came in as it's the wrong species. Still so they're going to have to remove them and put them somewhere else and then replace them. So are we going to have to buy a second tree? Well, we're not buying a Transfer agreement, Barney's call, High School. <laughs> right. So that's between them and the contractor. Okay. The trees they purchase get too large for them. Yeah. yeah. Right. Let's hear it. So, all we heard is giving permission for the That's it. Yes. All right. Um, 11B. Um, we have an ordinance in our um, package here. Um, the planning board and it's many and development regulations. Um, chapter 2 on the to um, include a material recovery facility as a principal permitted use in the, um, one industrial district. Everybody get a chance to review it and have any comments on it? It just changes the designation. I thought it was structure. And it's a request from um, Ruben Eddy, basically. Um, right. Any materials he brings in and his containers, he wants to separate them and recycle them. Construction materials, non perishable items, plastics, um, you know, non painted wood, <coughs> wood that have to be separated out of places, metals, um, so cardboard, paper. Non liquid, non vegetative. Yes. Right. Which is not smelly or. You no, know. nothing else. No. Right. And it's just, it's limited to, as you can see here, it's limited to just his business itself. Yep. No outside contractors, no trucks, only his own. Yep. Now, but he doesn't seem to want us to drop. It's just stuff that's put out by our well, for our container business. Yeah, we're, you call for a container and you said, "Let me demolish my kitchen." And you have recyclable wood that was in there. You had some plastic she threw away. Okay. Okay. That's a good thing. Okay. Can we can we get that ready for August, or do you want to introduce it tonight? We can't do that tonight. Let's see how we can work on it. No, let's introduce it tonight. Okay, so we're going to 15 minutes at 9. Okay, 1699. 1699. 1699. Okay, entertain a motion. Um, I'm going to move ordinance. Um, 151699 and ordinance amending land development regulations chapter to include materials recovery facilities as a principal uh, um, permitted use in the um, one industrial district. Moved by Mr. Barabow. Second. Second by Councilman Schmidt. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Abstain? No, the ayes have it. All right, fire company requests. Um, 11C, use of four on September 12th, the use of the train station on October 17th. I believe it's pretty self explanatory, and you know, we do this every year. Yep. That's right. So, yes. Well, then they have their part. Yes. Um, pool. Probably in the pool and the hunt. So, um, any comments on it? Charlie, is that with the pool? Fine. All right. Get the ball. Aye. Opposed? All right, 11D, outdoor storage and display of merchandise for sale. Um, this is an old ordinance that was on the books, and um, Mr. Summa from Shawbury requested that we amend the ordinance um, two times out of the year. He has to bring his outdoor displays in, which are based on his property and not to so, um, as a requirement of this ordinance. And Jack, how far back did this go? It's quite old, isn't it? Uh, 2005, looks like the last amendment. 2005. And um, so he basically wants us to um, 
the um, times when he has to bring them and he just wants to be able to leave them out and to sell like everybody else does all year. Um, he wrote a short, um, sent us a short email from his own. Um, yeah, he was time. March 1st to December 31st, just yes. to, to, for it to be open mm -hmm. in between those dates. I mean, it, he's, it implies that he could put fresh food, but it's basically just the plants, isn't it? Although he then does Christmas trees. Yeah, it's a variety of things. It changes with the season, you know, yeah, pumpkins and the right. fall. And, and what right. happens for that short period of time when he starts to sell, then you have to bring the plants in and see them wind up in the store. Right. And then two weeks later, you are bring it back out. Well, I would think he would want it through December 31, because he does right. Christmas yeah. trees. But the ordinance is specific where it, it indicates certain periods of time where you have to bring them in. Okay. Right. The ordinance is allowed from March 15th through the 4th of July, no, no, through the first Sunday after the 4th of July, and then from August 21st through December 27th. So, so between the July date and the August date, he has to bring us right. in. So he's, he's looking for two weeks on the front end, three days on the back end, and they five weeks in the middle. I don't remember why those dates came from the planning board. I don't remember why, do you, Jeff? I kind of thought they came from the council. That's my recollection. Um, I know that went back and forth between did, the council yeah. and the planning board. I could be wrong today. Um, and I'm not sure if the basic well, it will go to the planning board for review anyway yes, after okay. it's introduced, so we'll get their comments if we need them, uh, or, you know, we'll get them anyway. Um, okay, so um, we they to introduce it. So get this ready for introduction <laughs> on, in August? Yes. Okay. Right, because all we're doing is just changing number one. Right. We're just changing the dates. Everyone else is still in effect. Yep. Okay. Okay. All right, that's just good. We don't have anything on that, correct? No, I'll, I'll reach out to Dan Lincoln again. Okay. So we'll carry that to August. We're waiting for status on the ninth. That seems like forever. Yeah, I agree. I mean, is it more than three months? It's at least two. Yeah. What's what's a, what's a we need to put you know some pressure to find Who's on that I mean, at least getting some kind of status. It's got to be something. It was some just a, a no answer. There. Uh, well, and, and Dan was very eager to do this. In fact, he sent me the model from Bernie's Township. So maybe yeah, so right. I remember hearing that. Um, I, think there, I think he wants to make sure that uh, he may have to make a, a, a personnel change within the committee, a stronger treasurer or something. Just, it's going to be a much bigger project in terms of them running that. Um, All right, maybe, yeah. So he's, he's having some, uh, some discussions with, with members. But yeah, no, he, he's definitely in favor of it. Yeah. Um, so I put it back on your August agenda? Yeah, we'll carry it over August. Okay. Let's see if we get any response. <coughs> Why don't we invite it to the meeting too? We'll do that. All right, 11 that nepotism policy, recreation request regarding full substitute manager, Cheryl. Yes, um, just, uh, just a quick, to go back a few years, I don't know if some of the new council people are aware of. A few years back, council allowed they voted on that council children can work for recreation, okay, whether it's a lifeguard at the pool or a camp counselor. So just, just to, you know, keep that in mind. Um, I currently have assistant pool manager and a pool manager on board at the pool. Uh, at times, and myself, I fill in. At times, you know, a pool manager last year, one of them, he got sick, and then the other guy already had some plans, so, you know, at times it can get a little difficult to fill in a day here and there, or maybe an evening, someone has a doctor's appointment or something to that effect. I have these employees, the, they're temporary um, part-time at-will employees, okay? So, I have, um, they don't, my pool managers don't hire, they don't fire, and they do not set salary at all. Actually, you know, I'll decide what it is and then it goes to the mayor council for their approval. So I have a person that would make a great fill-in pool manager. And they're, they're, you know, a little bit hard, not that you can get someone, but it's hard sometimes to get someone just to fill in for a day here and there. If they want a job, they want it full-time. I have someone 
but their child works also as a lifeguard. So I did speak to Jack regarding this and, you know, being the word in the title is manager, assistant, whether it's assistant, Phil, whatever, still manager, our policy <coughs> says that it would be a fall of the nepotism. I'm asking, being that the pool assistant manager, Phil manager, they don't set the policies or set the salaries, if, if this could be changed and have that to allow both of those people in that family to work there. Not that I would have the manager working the same day as the, you know, as the child. Like, you know, that could be worked on, but I'm just asking that that nepotism be changed for that. <coughs> One question. Would, the, would that temporary fill-in manager be uh, setting the hours and you know, who works and what the schedule is? No. And I, I don't think it's a problem no, myself. It's, I don't know. Would we have to change the ordinance, or can we just make an exception for this particular situation this year? I think we can make an exception. If need be, we can change the ordinance. We're halfway through the summer, so. Right. Right. I mean, we're not trying to right. set a policy for next year and the year after. It's exactly. just so he's having moved to give Cheryl uh, uh, latitude, latitude to. for this particular two employees for this. Not saying we need a roll call on this, or just. I think the voice vote, but I would put something on the record. So, um, so this before be for um, this one particular situation, or does Cheryl need to come forward each time if there's a, a subject? Well, I think it's for these two, and if, if it happens again, then we should Okay, so resolution is for these two. Okay. Okay, okay, so all in favor? Aye. So I'm sorry, I didn't hear who moved that and seconded it. Um, I don't think we're moving it. Not yet. We're oh, you're not? Sorry. I'll move. Uh, uh, then I'll second it. Whatever. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for bringing up the show. All right, 11H. We have a revised draft ordinance regulating the parking and storage of recreation vehicles in small lot residential houses. Um, you can get you. Oh, 200 Washington Point Road. Um, again, we're, we have very little movement on 200 Washington Corner. Um, you have the planning board's recommendations in your packet mm -hmm. and a Brief response from the Environmental Commission. Um, I think this is a kick the can around situation. Yeah. I <coughs> haven't heard anything from the Great Swamp, right? Uh, um, no, we got They're waiting. I believe they're waiting. At least I don't know if I put that memo in the package. I don't remember. Um, I don't remember saying anything. They need to have the basic information. So they can do due diligence um, as uh, they're familiar with some of the properties and there were issues. So they just want to make sure there are no issues, right. but otherwise they would be interested. And, and so until they have that package of information, they can't really do it. Right. And the organization that approached you is thinking they don't think the Great Swamp will take that sort of a property, that it's well, not... There are some things in the history of the background of the two organizations. Yeah. So um, we're better off, I think, maybe getting information to the Great Swamp and letting them make their own determination. Uh, well, we already asked the organization that approached you up front to yeah. approach the Great Swamp. So I guess we'll just go back to them and tell them to go ahead and approach the Great Swamp. I don't know why she was waiting. <coughs> um, I mean, we did that uh, once. Yeah, I'll uh, talk to you then, and uh, oh, okay. we'll take that. All right. <coughs> Do you run the bottle? Yes. Okay, 11H. Um, revised draft ordinance regulating the parking and storage of recreation vehicles in small lot residential zones. So this went back to the housing <coughs> committee to discuss lot sizes to add that to the ordinance. Yes. As requested by the council list. Yeah, one thing I have to add is the R110, so I just think I would remember since it's been a week in court. Litigating. Anyone else have any questions or changes? No, I think time? it's clearer than it was two weeks ago. Yeah. Or three weeks ago, I guess. Yes. Yeah. It's <coughs> appreciated coming back. Uh, luck, luck yes. Yeah. <coughs> um, I do have another question, though. Um, the f vehicle size and so on and so forth. Um, so that'd be for farming. Okay, that's good. Um, no, yeah, that's it. Never mind. The size was more like the size of a bed of a pickup. 
that we felt that that was a reasonable size. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a heavy duty, but not heavy, not big hauling and, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, no, that makes, no, that's good. Okay. So the final value ordinance reads, does anyone want to put on your August agenda? I'm sorry? Want to put on your August agenda? Yes, for introduction? Yes. I think it's ready. Okay. Okay. 11 I, draft ordinance revising housing ordinance to require the posting of floor plans and maximum occupancy limits and rental units. So this is another discussion that went back and we just revised the size and to add the floor plans to the unit. So this is a very useful for your housing inspectors when they go into a unit, they'll know exactly how many, um, what's the unit is um, designated for you to do the amount of uh, occupancy. Um, and another thing too, it's also good in case of fire police, you'll be able to see how many people are going in certified to be in the unit. And with the floor plans posted, it'll be easier to get through the unit if yeah. it's an emergency. It's right. emergency. And, uh, and we decided that the floor plans would be in a consistent area within each unit. And the recommendation was, it sounds a little crazy, but it actually makes a lot of sense, is that the, the, the information will be located in the vanity, the bathroom vanity, underneath the bathroom sink on the door. That'll be the standard location for it. Because originally the proposal was to put it on the back of the door, um, but then some people complained that uh, who wants to you know, see that kind of post on the back no, of the door? No, I think the door is a little bit. As long as it's the same place. It's even the place that we trust. The whole house has a, a sink in the kitchen and it's a central location. That's right. a good question. Do you want to work on that for uh, room size? Yeah, to do it. Right, because that's what they have to submit for their application. Right. Okay. It, that location provision is not in this draft because I met with the housing committee after this was submitted to state. Okay. So when it's introduced to the next meeting, it will be added. Good. And I think that was it for that, right, Jeff? Yes. Yeah. So the question, it. Councilman, is this, you said for the police and fire, is this, a, is this occupancy limit for residential occupancy? <laughs> like as far as living in it? Yes. Or does that include guests and... No, no, this is for what it's certified on their application for the unit. To reside. To reside in the unit. Permanent. Mr. Chief, I think what the feeling was that it would benefit the police was the floor plan as opposed to the... Oh, yeah, no, that's fine. It's just, we said occupancy limit. I'm thinking like there's an occupancy limit in this room. Right, right. You know, so you think we go to the whole building? Or yeah. You know. <coughs> I think we're done. So, um, clarification, then if... Holidays, you have you know family members staying for whatever period of time. You can have them for some period of time. Is that limited? Yeah, yeah. but you know, I, I'd rather not put that into the ordinance, or it's going to get abused. Yeah. You know, it's it's one of those things. Uh, you know, I think I that's more like temporary, office, so it's not going to generate any complaints. Yeah. Uh, if we try to make exceptions like that. I think we're going to have too great a potential to. Uh, Generally speaking, most guests are staying for more than a week or two. Right. No, no. I thought that I think it's being Yeah. Right. One more question. Are these floor plans? Yeah. Yeah. Are these floor yeah. plans and limits going to be um, kept in the, the file for the unit as well as posted? Yes, yeah. Kevin. So there'll be a file here so with right. the application, and then a copy will be put on the on the on the door. On the door. I believe we discussed yeah. electronic scanning mm -hmm. also. Yeah. That's the next step. We have to figure out what kind of laminated or whatever. It has to be, you know, the right. sounds because it's going to be on the sinks. Okay. okay, so we're all right with that. So we'll prepare for the next meeting? Yes. Yes. All right. All right, second open session. At this point, I'm going to be on to a second open session. Anybody with the public wish to be heard on any matters? Seeing the council members? Anything else before we. Um, <clears throat> just for clarification, since we're talking about property and environmental all this stuff it's his property that um, a not-for-profit organization has that's um, um, environmentally sensitive and they took it took the uh, stewardship of that property so uh, the problem is is um, they're not going to be able to maintain it <clears throat> um, and I actually went to a seminar recently on that is what do you do for stewardship on these things and typically a organization like the Great Swamp is far better prepared to um, monitor which and manage um, that kind of land than towns are. <clears throat> so that's why we, I, I, I know it was kind of cryptic, but it's a small piece of land and um, 
we think would be better in their hands than us keeping it for our, for us that was offered to us. So, are, are we talking about two hundred Washington? Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Well, that's are you coming uh, out of yes, closed we'll session? Yes, we'll be coming out of closed session with a decision. Okay. Okay, seeing nobody else on the open session, I'll um, motion to adjourn the closed session. Um, during closed session, we're going to discuss interlocal agreements, um, possibility, and contract negotiations. Um, contract negotiations for our rental inspection unit and matter of attorney client privilege.